Welcome to Fear Free Childbirth Podcast with Alexia Leachman, the weekly nine-month podcast to help parents-to-be look forward to their fear-free childbirth. Alexia is a pregnancy and head trash clearance coach and the author of Fear Free Childbirth, How to Have a Stress-Free Pregnancy and a Positive Pain-Free Birth. As a mum who's had two fear-free and pain-free births, Alexia wants to share with you how she overcame her pregnancy and childbirth fears so that you can look forward to having a fear-free birth too. Over the nine-month life of this podcast, Alexia will be sharing some real-life stories from mums and dads, insights into the latest childbirth research, inspiring tales from birth professionals, and some tips and techniques for clearing your fears and stresses. If you would like to receive a free chapter from her book, then head over to fearfreechildbirth.com, where you can also sign up for her email series, How to Have a Stress-Free Pregnancy. But now, it's time for the show. Hello and welcome back to the Fear Free Childbirth podcast. This is me, your host, Alexia Leachman. Thank you so much for joining me today. On today's show, we're going to be talking about due dates and the big due date lie, which is that your due date is probably wrong. And so that's what we're going to cover on the show. It's a really important topic because due dates can cause a huge amount of stress in the lead up to birth. And that is really the last few weeks. The last thing you need when you're pregnant is more stress than than unnecessary stress, actually. You don't need that kind of stress when it can be easily avoided. And so having much more clarity around what your due date is. And also, let's be clear, it's not really a due date. It's more of a bunch of weeks around a date, you know, more like due month. But nevertheless, it's really important to have an idea about what that date is, because that's what the midwife and the doctors are going to be talking to you about, especially when they're talking about possibly inducing you. So you really need to have clarity around that date. But also because of all the people around you, that are going to be asking for updates that also cause a huge amount of due date stress at that point. So that is what today's episode is all about. Now, before I dive into all that, I've just got a couple of things that I want to share with you before we do. Now, the first thing is this. We've now got a Facebook page. So as you know, this is a very young podcast. We're only on episode 10. And so I finally got around to creating a Facebook page. So you can come and find us on Facebook at Fear Free Childbirth. Very simple. Same name as the podcast. So please come and like us there. And we're going to be sharing lots of things there for you to help, well, to help you to have a fear-free childbirth. There is actually a, uh, we're also putting some offers through on the Facebook page as well. And there's an offer currently sitting on the page as well to get a discount on some of our audio products. And that's the next thing I wanted to tell you about was I've just released two new audios into the pregnancy collection. Now, as you know, one of the things I really want to help you with is to have a fear free childbirth and of course that means getting rid of fears so that's not always easy to do on our own and so one of the things I recognize that is really important to help women to get rid of their fears is to try and provide them as many tools and make it easy for them so that's what I've done I've created an audio for what I think is probably one of the biggest fears around childbirth and that is fear of childbirth yeah you know a lot of people are just totally terrified of childbirth itself. So there's, a, there's now an audio available for you to download so that you can clear your fear of labour and childbirth. So that's in the pregnancy collection at the moment sitting at the fearfreechildbirth.com website. But also I've put another one there at the moment which is also a really important one and that is to get rid of birth trauma. So for those of you that have had a, a very difficult birth, maybe a traumatic birth, then it's really to help you to get over that and to heal that so that it doesn't affect your births going forward. And so you can really sort of think about your next birth without the emotional pain that you might still be holding on to as a result of any previous births that you've had. So those are the two audios that are currently in the pregnancy collection. There are a lot more coming. You'll get a sight of them by seeing them there on the page they're just not all ready I'm in the middle of doing a lot of recording behind the scenes and I'll be letting I'll be releasing those as and I'll be letting you know here on the podcast if there's anyone you know if you've got one that you see there and you think hey I really this is one that I really need then just email me and I'll just move it to the top of the list and try and get it ready as soon as I can for you so um, you know do check out the pregnancy collection on the fearfreechildbirth.com website. And yes, there are two audios there. And I've got some great, I've got a little discount code to share with you because you may or may not be aware, but we lost a very uh, 
a trailblazer in the world of childbirth uh, this week, Shirley Kazinger, who she set up among lots of books that she wrote on childbirth, natural childbirth, but also she set up the Birth Crisis Network. And so in honour of her work to help women that had traumatic births, and I'm going to be offering my birth trauma MP3 healing trauma a session for free. So if you just use the code podcast at checkout, then for the rest of April 2015, you can get that MP3 session for free. If you know anybody that has had a traumatic birth that you really want to help, them, then just please point them in the direction of this session. I'm giving it away free. I just want to help women out there to really clear their trauma. So if you do know anybody, then please send them over to the website and just tell them about the code podcast in caps, podcast in caps, uh, that you can use at the checkout to get that mp3 session for free it's usually $19 so you'll get that completely free so now back to the show and I started the show by saying that I'm going to be talking about due dates and I also made the bold claim that I thought your due date was wrong so how can I make such a claim well it's because of this the calculation method that is widely used for calculating due dates is a little bit flawed. And when I say a little bit, I'm kind of understating it massively. It's it's flawed in lots of ways. And I'm going to sort of talk about this in just a little while, because it really is staggering that this method is still used as widely as it is, even though it's flawed in the way that I'm about to share with you. So the method that's currently used most widely among midwives and doctors, and certainly all the calculation tools that you find on a lot of pregnancy websites, uses Neagle's rule. Now, Neagle, if you want to Google this, there's a lot of information out there. So do feel free to check it out. I'll be putting a lot of links to do with everything that I'm going to share with you on today's show in the podcast show notes. And you'll be able to find those show notes at fearfreechildbirth.com forward slash 10. That's one zero because of episode 10. So feel free to have a look at the show notes to get further information on what I'm sharing with you today, because it is really important. But a lot of it has got a lot of other really solid information out there that you can check out and read for yourself. Now, Neagle's rule is named after the guy that came up with it, Franz Neagle. Now, he lived during the 1700s, so between 1778 and 1851. So already get a sense of how far back this idea dates. Now, according to Neagle's rule, the standard definition for gestational term is 266 days from the conception to the date of baby's birth. And this is also defined as maybe 280 days or 40 weeks from the first day of the mother's last menstrual period. And this is a definition that assumes that the mother ovulates on day 14 of a 28 day cycle. And so the actual formula, if you are calculating your due date based on Neagle's rule, is this. It's LMP, which is your, which is your last menstrual period, plus seven days, minus three months, gives you your due date. Now, the thing about this formula is that it's, this theory actually originates from a guy called Harmani Berhav. And Berhav is a botanist who, in 1744, came up with a method of calculating the estimated due date based on evidence in the Bible that human gestation lasts approximately 10 lunar months. So let me just let that sit there for a moment based on evidence in the Bible that human gestation lasts approximately 10 lunar months. Now, I don't know about you, but there seems to be so much wrong with that sentence that it's scary. And the fact that we are still using this method that is based on an idea in the Bible today is absolutely staggering. Now, the reason that I'm quite passionate about due dates is because they got my due date wrong quite significantly for my recent pregnancy. And it led to a whole heap of trouble with me having to deal with consultants and midwives that were pressurising me to have an induction because they thought I was late and I was not at all late. And, you know, inductions are not the way you want to go if you want to try and avoid having a difficult birth. You want to allow nature to do all the work. You do not want to interfere with that on any level. So that's why it's so important to really have a clear idea of your due date. So let's go back to this this, tech, this this approach that is based on evidence in the Bible. So for starters, I mean, the Bible, like, come on, how long ago was the Bible written? You would think that given how many people have been born since the Bible was written, that we'd be able to maybe come up with a 
an approach that is built on something a bit more than when they say, oh, it, you know, human gestation lasts approximately 10 lunar months. Have we not maybe learned a bit more about human gestation since the Bible? Seriously, guys, come on. And that potentially is the problem here, that guys are behind all this, you know, that maybe there's too many men involved in this birthing thing that us women really need to reclaim, you know. So also based on evidence in the Bible, I'm not sure, of, I mean, personally, I'm not entirely sure that the Bible is a reliable source of evidence in terms of human gestation. You know, one thing that's quite clear is that the Bible's not very accurate when it comes to time. It did say that the earth was created in seven days, and yet most of us have accepted that that's highly unlikely, if not downright impossible. So when the Bible's telling us that human gestation lasts 10 months, approximately, should we really be taking that entirely seriously and basing a something so important as our due date that we're all working for and psyching ourselves up for and making decisions about inductions on on something that is so woolly. So for me, this already is starts really sort of it's one of the big flaws that really starts unraveling this approach quite rapidly in on a quite worrying level. Now the other thing that's quite important to realise about this, it says it's based on evidence in the Bible. And actually there is not any evidence at all. This this approach has not been put through scientific experiments or any, so there's no research, there's no scientific or empirical evidence to back up this approach whatsoever. So this Neagle's rule does not have science to back it up and yet it's still widely used. There's not even any hundred year old scientific research, there's nothing. There's nothing has been done to back up Neagle's rule and yet we're still using it. Now but so it's flawed, right? But I've not finished. There's still more. There's still more. Believe me. Right. The next bit that I'm slightly concerned about is the fact that it says human gestation lasts approximately 10 lunar months. So we're now talking in lunar cycles like hello, lunar cycles like, OK, so I'll try and just be serious for just one moment. If we do look into lunar cycles and if you do Google it, you know, Google lunar cycles, one thing you'll notice is there's, there's quite a lot of lunar cycles. And so depending on when you calculate the beginning and the end of a lunar cycle, you'll get a lunar month might range anything from 27 days or 27.3 days to be precise, up to 29.5 days. So there's a bit of a leeway there, of maybe two to three days, right? But the one that's most widely used everywhere is the synodic month. And if you just check Wikipedia, Wikipedia will tell you that it's basically 29.5 days. So if we're using the assumption that this legal rule says that human gestation lasts approximately 10 lunar months, then you would multiply 29.5 by 10 and you get 295 days. And so that's human gestation of 295 days. But Neagle's rule, or the, the rule that's calculated, says that human gestation is 280 days. So already we've got a gap of two weeks between the assumed length of human gestation that we're using to come up with this rule. And already when you dig a little bit deeper into what it's based on, then you have a, a different span that actually is two weeks out. So already you can get a sense that your due date that is given to you is swaying quite significantly over this sort of 15 day period between the 280 day gestation period and the 295 day gestation period. So we've got two weeks already there. But I'm afraid I've not finished because there's more. The other thing that Neagle's rule is based on, it's based on the idea that our menstrual cycle lasts 28 days. So hands up, ladies, whose cycle does not last 28 days? Right. Well, mine doesn't. I don't know about you, but, you know, it's quite common to find that, you know, menstrual cycles can last anything from 22 days maybe up to 35 days. I know that my cycle, when I was, you know, up until my recent pregnancy experience, was 34 days. And so already you need to start changing the date that's given to you using Neagle's rule based on what cycle you typically experience within your own life. So again, if you have, you know, depending, so for me, for example, because my cycle is 34 days, then 34 minus 28 is six. And so that means I would need to add six days onto that 
due date that I was given, just to take into account the effect of my own menstrual cycle length to that due date. So already we've got 15 days, a little bit of leeway. Oh, and there's another six we've got to throw in because it actually assumes 28 day cycle and I wasn't a 28 day cycle. So you have this sort of flexibility because of your own cycle length, which is going to sort of sway the date a bit. Then you've got the inherent 15 day that's just kind of built into the approach where it can't decide whether you're 295 day gestation or 280 days. So there's this kind of other wiggle room of this two weeks. But there's one final piece that kind of really does, for me, you know, (laughs) all this is really showing that this approach is is quite flawed indeed. But the final piece is the ovulation piece. So again, Neagle's rule assumes that we kind of ovulate maybe halfway through our 28 cycle. Now, of course, if we don't have a 28 cycle, then we're not going to be ovulating at that 14 day point but also we don't ovulate halfway through the month every time because it changes depending on you know it can be affected by things like whether you've just come off the pill or if you're stressed or maybe if you're ill or maybe experiencing some kind of disruption of routine anything like that could maybe throw your ovulation off so But that sounds a lot like life stuff right you know stress a lot of us are stressed in our lives a lot of us have got changing lives that, you know, that kind of change quite rapidly. The world around us is changing quite a lot at the moment. And so it's not unheard of for women to be stressed and having lots of change happening to them. And so it's possible that their ovulation won't be as expected halfway through their cycle. So you see, when you sort of break down Neagle's rule, you see that it's kind of really flawed and your date could potentially be, depending on your cycle length, And depending on how it's actually calculated, it could be maybe two to three weeks out. Now, this is really quite important to try and get right, because when it's out that much, imagine you've got your due date that you've been given. Let's say it's been, I'll just share my own story here. My due date was given to me by my midwives of the 23rd of September last year. And so, you know, I was thought, oh, well, maybe it's going to be early. So I stopped work. Uh, at the end of August so that I could have three weeks to kind of really prepare for my birth and really just start winding down. But it did mean that I stopped earning money at the end of August. Now, when I came to calculate my due date using the other known methods that there are available, which I'll share with you later, that are backed by science. So there are approaches and ways of calculating your due date that are backed by science and that are known to be a lot more accurate, and yet they don't tell us these. I'll be sharing those in a minute. But when I recalculated my due date, my new due date was coming out with the first week in October, between the 6th and the 9th of October. So from the 23rd of September to the 6th or the 9th of October is quite a significant gap, as I'm sure you can appreciate. And when you're at that point in your pregnancy, where not only are you you know, your due date arrives and you are more than ready to give birth at that time. You really are. You feel like you're ready to pop and you just want to, you just want to move on to the next phase. And no, it's not coming. And and then you start getting worried because is everything all right? And then the doctors and the midwives are pressurizing you into, well, when do you want to book in for your suite? When do you want an induction? What, you know, all these kind of questions are coming your way. And maybe baby just isn't ready. And actually it's much too early to be having those conversations. And so to get the date right is really, really important. So the fact that we're all using this system that really is quite flawed, I think is incredibly worrying. And if you want to try and have the best birth experience that you possibly can, and I think a key part of that is getting a handle on your due date and really getting clear on a due date that you're comfortable with so that when it comes to, if you need to, to really resist having an induction when the time comes that you're doing so from a place of confidence but also from a place that knowing that you're you you you, you don't want to be putting baby's life at risk of course you don't so by coming up with by looking into your due date using other known methods that are backed by science gives you the confidence to be able to say no I want to wait another week I want to wait another two weeks whatever it is so that you can do so in from a calm place and not get stressed because stress will only delay labour. So what are those other calculation methods? Well, let me share them with you right now. There's the first one, which is is called PARC. So the research from this one is from 1968. And the PARC method uses a gestation period of 288 days. 
And then there's Nichols, which is from 1985. And with the Nichols approach, there are two different formula, depending on whether it's your first pregnancy or whether it's your third pregnancy onwards, because they've picked up within their research that you get a different gestation period depending on which pregnancy you're in. So the the first pregnancy gestation period they cite as being 290 days and the third pregnancy onwards for them is 286 days. And then you've got Mittendorf and Mittendorf cites a gestation period of 288 days and 283 days for the two different, whether it's your first pregnancy or your third pregnancy. So broadly speaking, you're looking at a difference of about eight days and that's before you've added in the element that you need to consider to do with your cycle. So for example if you've got a longer cycle then you'll be adding some more days on top of that. So already you can see that the due date you've been given is probably out by at least a week if not more. Now what I'm going to do in terms of sharing how you can calculate your revised due date is this. I've created a cheat sheet that will help you to calculate your alternative due dates. Now, I thought about just reading out the formula right here on the podcast, but you know, I just think reading out these formulas that's like last menstrual period plus seven days minus three months, open bracket, calculate this bit, close bracket, divide it by X. You, you don't want to be hearing that kind of stuff over in your ears right now. The best thing is, is just to have it written down and you can see it in front of you. So that's why I've created a cheat sheet for you. It's just a one pager with the formula on it and then a nice little box on the right hand side so that you can literally just put your revised due date in. And then once you've calculated all four of your due dates based on the current system, which is Neagle's rule, so you've probably already got that due date already, but then you can see what the three other dates are to compare it alongside and that will give you a real sense then of the time frame that you can expect your little one to make an appearance and if you want then you are armed with some good information for you to go and speak to your healthcare providers maybe your doctor your midwife about the due date that they've given you and at least you're doing so from an informed perspective so if you want to get hold of that cheat sheet what you need to do is to go to the show notes of this podcast episode which is fearfreechildbirth.com forward slash 10 the number 10 one zero and this is episode 10 so that's why it's the number 10 and then on the show notes within the blog post for the show then you will find on that page a box where you just click to download the cheat sheet. And it's as simple as that. That's all you need to do. And then you'll immediately have the PDF download that is the cheat sheet. Now, as I've mentioned, this is all the stuff I've shared with you here is based on research. So if you want to read any of the research that I'm mentioning today, then I'll be putting links on the show notes on the fearfreechildbirth.com website. So it's all there. If you want to dive down deep and read this stuff and bury your head in research papers, then go right ahead. I'm going to provide all the links that I've used to pull together my information for this as well. And also I'd like to share with you, this is exactly what I was doing in the lead up to my birth when I discovered quite by chance about these other calculation methods. And when I did... I was like, wow, this is quite significant. You know, like I mentioned earlier, we were planning, you know, we thought the little one was going to arrive in September and obviously little one could arrive early. So we both, my partner and I both cleared September out of our diaries. We both have our own businesses. So he literally pushed back all client stuff back into October because we felt that really October was going to be, babe would have arrived by then, you know, and September was clear. And yet, and, and, Yet baby arrived on October the 5th and had baby arrived on the 6th, daddy wouldn't have been there because daddy was flying over to Stockholm for business and I would have had to have my dad helping me deliver my little one at home in the birthing pool. I mean, this would have been a very different situation to the one that we thankfully had. And if I, you know, the the due date had been worked out better in the first place, then we wouldn't have planned it that way. And we would have allowed that leeway into October so that daddy wasn't flying out on a business trip for eight days when the little one was one day old. So obviously, you know, we can't predict when little ones arrive and it is incredibly unpredictable. However, given that my little one did arrive within one day of a due date calculated using Mittendorf, then I think it's fair to say that 
they really did get my due date wrong. Now, on top of that, when my little one arrived, I asked the midwives, I said, look, is is my little one late? You know, is there anything that you can see from what you can see from the baby that she's late? And they said, absolutely not. She's definitely not late. If anything, she's a little bit early, but she's very pink. She's very healthy looking. There's no way that she's a late baby. So essentially, the midwives and doctors in my personal situation totally got my due date wrong. And had they wanted to induce me around about the 23rd of September, then it would have simply been too early for baby. And that is not good for a baby to come out of mummy's tummy before it's ready. It simply is not good for baby to do that. Of course, unless there's some medical reason that baby needs to come out sooner. Of course, I'm not, but I'm not talking about those kind of situations. What I'm talking about is if everything's going fine, if you're healthy, baby's okay, no distress, then baby is best left inside until baby is ready. The thing is, I was facing a lot of pressure from my the doctors and consultants to be induced from the 23rd of September. And I had to fight them off, showing them this research, going into the hospital with my iPad, with all my research saying, no, look, <laughs> This leave me alone. I am not. You need to change the due date on my records. I am not being induced at least until the 9th of October. Please leave me alone. And so, but I felt confident in doing that because I had taken the time to look into it, to read the research and to get savvy. And that's really important because I was able to do that from a calm place and not give in to being induced from a place of fear because I was being given a lot of scary scenarios about what might happen if I let baby stay in. And some of that stuff to hear from a doctor or a consultant can be very, very scary and quite fear inducing. And so if you do want to be putting your foot down and really taking back control over your pregnancy and your birth, then it's really important to be really well informed. So I don't want you to take my word for it. This is really just an eye opener for you to sort of start looking into it and finding out more information for yourself. And so I simply want to sort of help you on that journey. So this is why I'm going to be sharing with you the links where I got my information from so that you can read about it yourself and come to a place that you're happy with and that you're confident with. So I hope that today's episode has been useful. I hope that you are going to be able to come up with a due date that's more realistic for you, that will help you to manage expectations all around you, you know, manage your friends and family as well, because nothing worse, certainly in my pregnancies, when it was coming up to due date and my Facebook page was just being like, Every day was people going, well, is it is it there yet? Is it there yet? It's like, leave me alone. If I'd had my baby by now, do you think I would have kept it quiet? You know, and you just don't need that kind of constant pressure coming in from people all around you about the arrival of your baby. So to be able to manage those expectations well in advance and almost maybe just lie about your due date so that people are just off your back and allow you to just be calm and not feel hassled in that time then you know whatever works for you so I hope that today's been useful if you know somebody else that might benefit from hearing this podcast episode then please share the episode it would be really I'd be honored if you would share that and also just to remind you again at the beginning of the show I shared with you a discount code for my audio session for people that have experienced birth trauma in their life and so if you know anybody that maybe has experienced a negative birth or traumatic birth, then please do point them in the direction of this podcast, point them in the direction of the website, the fearfreechildbirth.com website, where they can get this free audio to help them. And the one thing that I didn't mention about that audio that I think is just worth mentioning quite quickly here is that if you are fearful of birth, then maybe it's to do with your own birth experience. So even though you can't remember your own birth experience, if it was a traumatic one, if your mother had trouble um, and didn't have a pleasant experience herself, then you will have memories of that within your system. And that itself is might be what's creating your own fear of birth. I'm going to be talking a lot more about birth trauma in another episode, so I don't want to go too much into it now. But if you have got a fear of birth, then maybe it's come from your own birth experience. And so if that is the case, then that session would be really great for you too. Okay, I hope that today's been useful and I'll see you guys next week. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in. You've just been listening to Alexia Leachman from the Fear Free Childbirth podcast. 
If you enjoyed the show, she'd really love it if you left a review on iTunes or Stitcher or shared it with a friend. And don't forget, to get a free chapter from her book, head over to fearfreechildbirth.com to get your copy, as well as finding other episodes in this podcast and more about how Alexia can help you with pregnancy and birth preparation coaching. Until next time.